Daryl, welcome back to the Glosser channel. I now want to ask you a question that I ask absolutely everyone, family, friends, work colleagues, even random strangers. And that question is, do you know anyone who has caught the coronavirus? Well, thanks for the question, Robert. Yes, um, my son actually, uh, one of his old schoolmates um, said, <coughs> I met him only um, well, when he was a little kid, but uh, only recently, and he said yes, he had caught and been diagnosed with um, SARS-2. Uh, his parents as well, they operate a restaurant here in Melbourne and uh, somebody came into that restaurant and um, accordingly his parents and himself and I think his sister as well also contracted the, um, uh, the, the virus. Uh, and he said, uh, <clears throat> you know, to us it was the symptoms were accordingly what the um, uh, Department of Health had put out as, you know, you, they lost their sense of taste and um, they had um, lost their sense of smell, but it was no more um, than a normal flu and the whole family got over it within about a week so uh, and his parents are in their sort of late 50s early 60s um, he's in his early 20s and his sister um, i think just uh, she's just under 20. so they all got over it no problems and got on with life so the urgency is clearly nothing what has been portrayed well, that's the real reason for my question. Uh, I know I mentioned to you off camera in our private conversation, I said, I believe the coronavirus is real. I know there's a lot of people who say it is a total hoax. There is no virus at all. They are entitled to their opinion. I believe the virus does exist, but I want to make it very clear. I don't believe the coronavirus COVID-19 poses anywhere near as real or as heavy a risk or threat as we're being told. There seems to be a massive amount of overreaction to something that most people, the vast, vast, vast majority, will recover from fairly quickly and with a, a limited amount of uh, inconvenience during the time they're experiencing those symptoms. Yes, our society has confronted far worse um, forms of influenza, especially since the early 2000s. Um, SARS-1, uh, influenza B claimed a lot of lives, especially the elderly. Um, and of course, now we're confronting just a repeat of that um, influenza B. And uh, accordingly, again, those with comorbidities uh, have um, fallen victim because it's, uh, it's uh, affected their respiratory system. They so would be they would be people who are already somewhat susceptible. Absolutely, and um, not just to coronavirus, to any number of things. Any number of things. Um, it's quite common for those who have got um, diabetes or they got heart problems or lung problems. Um, that ammonia is the downfall. When they contract pneumonia, uh, then of course, uh, then their bodies, usually their systems can't handle that and uh, they step away. But um, the emergencies that have been announced by different governments around Australia and around the world uh, have been wanting for explanation. <clears throat> Where's the evidence that this is an emergency? Where's the evidence that the um, deaths that we were prescribed through the Imperial College um, back in the early 2020 um, that each country would suffer <clears throat> is uh, has borne any fruit? I haven't seen any evidence and yet here in Victoria the um, Premier Daniel Andrews uh, managed to uh, bring about uh, a state of emergency until the end of pretty much 2021 um, and yet I see no evidence of that emergency and it's something that the Australian people and here in Victoria especially need to ask questions why are you doing this 
where's the evidence of this emergency? But in terms of the overreaction, the perceived overreaction to something that is nowhere near as risky as we've been told, do you have statistics on recovery rates? Well, most people are recovering um, as is accessible on any of the um, uh, World Health Organization or Center for Disease Control websites or even the Therapeutic Goods Association website, 99.7% uh, of people recover usually within a week. Um, anyone that's got any sort of um, healthy um, uh, situation, they're able to get over this. In fact, a lot of people don't even realize they've contracted the disease. Uh, uh, but one of the things that I see, we have asked the de particular departments of health around Australia is can you show us evidence um, via the pa a paper trail that establishes um, COVID-19 SARS-2 uh, as um, a, a disease, a virus. Can you show us that it has been isolated? And of course, the responses come back saying no. What they have isolated is the sequencing of that disease. Now, a sequence is just the remnants of a virus, whether that's virus is SARS-2 or whether it's influenza B or whether it's any one of the viruses that we are aware of. Is, has not been established. So if the virus hasn't been isolated, and in order to isolate a virus, there needs to be a set of guidelines that were established by Robert Koch back at the beginning of the 20th century. Has that occurred with SARS-2? And it hasn't. Uh, and this is admitted on the World Health Organization website and the Center for Disease Control. Uh, so the questions have to come from the general public to our public servants. Why is this so? Why are you promoting uh, the restrictions to our daily lives? Why are you asking us to wear these masks when the legislation doesn't grant you that power to um, insist upon the general public? It's very clear in legislation, both Commonwealth and state, and in every state of this country, that there needs to be a public health order in place against the individual with respect to the wearing of any medical equipment or any restrictions to their movement, where they can go or what they can do. That public health order is written into legislation. Of course, the governments have got around this by declaring an emergency. And again, those emergencies have been declared outside of the parameters of legislation because the legislation requires a control order to be in place before any restrictions to one's movement can be applied. And this hasn't been achieved. They've been operating off a direction. Now, a direction in law is wanting. Where is the power for a direction to override one's ability to trade, to operate in commerce, to move freely around this whole planet, not only this whole country? A direction is something they've drummed up in order to bring about what the legislation has not granted them the power to do. So all of our parliamentarians have to sit back and say, well, what's going on? Yeah, um, as we've discovered in the parliament, the knowledge of the Commonwealth Constitution, and this is repeated in every state, the knowledge of that amongst our parliamentarians is wanting. And we as the people of this country have to question what it takes to become a member of parliament, whether the guidelines that we have in place at the moment are good enough. And I think that this is, uh, these parameters um, have failed. We've 
we've got to fix this problem. We've got to fix it now because these, this left-wing propaganda that's being promoted at the moment using this virus as its shield is a good indication to the rest of us that we have a major problem in our administration and the quicker we get over that the better.